Batman 408, uh, which is written by Max Allen Collins and art by Chris Warner. This is kind of a famous issue, actually. Uh, I didn't realize it was the famous issue necessarily until I went to read it, but it's the you know the the, the stealing of the tires in the Batmobile. It's the Jason Todd origin it's story. One of the only non year one issues that we've gotten to so far around this time period that I've read before. Oh really? Uh, presumably in like some sort of collection. Yeah. Maybe it was in like maybe it was in a you know a, a, a death in the family trade or something. It was in something. I've read it. So I hadn't read this before, so there was a lot of surprises in here for me. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know about the the opening of the book, the, which is basically a fight with the Joker, where it's actually, I, I didn't even realize it was necessarily a dick right away. It wasn't until it became clear through the, the story. Um, I mean, I should be able to tell from the outfit, but it's you know, it's, that's not something I'm paying attention to. It's not that distinct. To be fair, Jason's outfit is pretty damn similar. But, you know, it's basically, it, the world thinks Robin dies in a Joker fight, and... When they're back at the mansion, and you know he's fine. He's got a, he's got some bandages on. He's got some bumps and bruises. Nothing too serious. Basically, Batman's like, you know, I think Robin should stay dead, and they have they have a bit of a fight. And I think, I mean, I don't know what the timeline is exactly. And one day we will definitely be doing New Teen Titans uh, on this show, but like it does imply to me that maybe like we were at Nightwing already and New Teen Titans by this point. Uh, possibly. I think I think we were because I'm pretty sure because it was just contract and I'm pretty sure that was like 1984 and this is like 1987 so I think Dick as Nightwing was already a, 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 like a thing for you know obviously not solo book Nightwing with the, the the proper costume but this was just lagging behind a bit maybe no 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 well this is a flashback because well, Jason, that's true, yeah. Jason, Jason's been Robin for no that's, that's true yeah like, I, I think I looked this up actually because what we were surprised like that like it was just Jason was just here and there was like and it was because we knew it was before his origin story which is kind of weird but I think Jason was in the comics for like maybe like two years by this point like so oh really okay yeah it'd been a while like he was around for well maybe just a year but it was it was definitely it was it was like a surprising I was like oh this wasn't just like a few issues before Crisis it was you know, yeah he's been around for a little while. Uh, and just not explaining them at all. Which, honestly, I think if we were reading that at the time, we'd have been like, why did they not explain this new shitbag Robin? Where, where, who is this idiot? Who is Jason Todd? <laughs> Tell us, you assholes. Uh, <laughs> so, but clearly this is meant to be your your uh, transition issue. This is meant to be the actual origin. And I think it's interesting that this actually does kind of reference the death of the parents. And that, admittedly, that's not unique for a Batman comic to do that. But I think just in the context of this being the first issue after year one, that there's like a sort of solid callback to Crime Alley and what happened that night. To sort and of like the, the coloring of that panel, uh, actually, you know, the, the very last yeah, panel, yeah. especially where under the streetlight looks like it could be straight out of year one. Yeah, I think it's an intentional kind of bridge, and it's almost like okay, so we did the, the Batman origin, so we're going to do the origin of the current Robin to sort of follow up and kind of really just establish what our current status quo. Before they realized is. they could get away with doing a whole Robin year one yes yes uh yeah but robin year one's not jason though right oh no that's only because jason wasn't popular by that point <laughs> uh, had, had jason been popular and stuck around at the time i I have no doubts that robin year one might well have actually been a jason story yeah, but if he was the current robin isn't robin year one deck yeah it is well yeah but surely tim was the active popular robin when that book was written yeah i don't know if he'd been around long enough at that point yeah or maybe they and, just gave and, him and we kind of did his year one in just his introduction. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They actually just did his origin as he was appearing, which is kind of how you're supposed to do it for the most part. Yeah, you you, you let him away with it with with Dick, for example, because it's from the golden yeah. age. <laughs> you know, yeah. No, even Batman. Like if you go back to like Batman issue one or Detective Comics twenty seven, his origin is two pages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, I mean. At least, Dick, uh, sorry, Dick, at least Jason here got a full issue. Well, half an issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would still say that he's ne the next issue is continuing the origin. I, I, what I wasn't expecting, though, was the ending, which is this new school for, like, delinquent boys is run by a granny gangster. I was, like, that, that final page where it's, like, the, the old granny who runs this place is like, all right, who's going to shiv him for me, boys? Yeah, it's, uh, it's Mar Gun. Am I supposed to know who Mar Gun is? Yeah. She's a recurring thing, and annoyingly currently appearing in a book I hate, but she's been a thing for years. Oh, she's in Red Hood right now? She, she has been for the last, like, pre the previous <laughs> half, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Which, if, if you paid attention to whenever I talk about no, it, I'm you would know. No, no, I'm not paying attention to that. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, no, that, that was a genuine a laugh out loud moment for me at the end of the issue, was that this granny was an evil old bitch. <laughs> I was not expecting it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so there's, there's some fun transitions here about talking about like, because because Gordon's like, hey, like Robin's not really dead. You know, he asked, well, he asked that first. And he's like, well, you're not going to let the press know because they're they're kind of butchering you here. As Vicky Vale's doing a number on you, and he's like, I don't care what they think. Blah blah blah. Uh, and it transitions to Vicky Vale that way. I I did question. Like, there's a scene here where he's on lunch. He's at lunch with Vicky, and there's like a mugger like happening uh, or mugging happening down the street, and he decides to intervene. And I was sort of thinking like. Bruce, like you can't make yourself look like you're like a really good crane fit here. But it actually, like halfway through the scene, had him think the same thing and goes, Oh shit, I'm doing too well. I better uh, let them get a couple of hits in so I don't look yeah, like Batman. Yeah. He's up a bit, you know, look like, because he's still, like, you know, a reasonably well built fella. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. L- look like you can throw a punch or two, but no no technique. Yeah. So, yeah, that kind of sets it up. And that, that lets you, that, that's when we get to the whole going, going back to Crime Alley afterwards and introduces the school. Uh, I like the Batman just walks down the street and there's like a couple of guys saying, oh, "Hey, Batman, uh, nice night for a stroll." He's like, "Gentlemen, like, a bit, a bit cash." Um, Batman calling his car uh, the the buggy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's some influence here and in, like try to do some more I don't know gritty storytelling after year one, but obviously the coloring and the dialogue still feels kind of old school. Clearly. It, not everyone was just going to jump to year one quality in terms of their stories. Uh, but No, it's a process. But call, calling the car the buggy was one that really stuck out to me. It's kind of silly. You know, it's kind of... That's true. I would say overall, though, this issue feels more like there has been a shift from year one than anything we read before it had. Especially oh, sure. in the Batman title specifically. Oh, sure, yeah. No, I mean, there's definitely it definitely feels more... I guess closer to modern Batman than the pre year one stuff felt. But it's it still a, feels it still feels closer to pre year one to us now than it does to sure, modern day comics. Compared that makes sense. to the, the three or four issues we had of Batman, specifically Batman before year one. Yeah. Detective's still doing God knows yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that'll shite. catch up. It'll <laughs> catch up and, eventually. I'm saying that as someone who's enjoying most of those issues, but it's still doing silly silver age bronze age. Yeah. This nonsense. this issue felt a little bit more grounded, like it was trying to shift. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so he obviously chases down Jason when he sees Jason come back to finish the job uh, with the tires, and he tries to fight back Batman. And obviously, the issue is basically just ends with him getting his tires back, saying that's not enough. You're going to have to go to uh, this school. It's better than a regular school, and Jason reluctantly kind of agrees. And the cliffhanger being that no, nope, she's she's evil and awful, and Jason's now in this predicament. And I guess we'll see how that <laughs> concludes next time. I don't It'll be a fight, fight the way out of it, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's a solid issue. It, it definitely felt like... No, I don't know how much this is going to carry forward, admittedly, especially since this is set in the past, technically, because obviously I assume we're going to jump back to present day after this two or three I, part. I would have thought so. Or whatever. Um, if it even matters, like, has anything happened in the last like couple of years of Batman that really, like... Technically, we have to acknowledge has happened. I mean, they may just never address it, and it's just we no, continue and, on. And, and let's remember, we've just spent four issues in year one, so mm. this is further ahead than that, just not as far ahead as we technically were. So it doesn't even feel like it's really jarring. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, the only thing that really places the other Batman issues before the or yeah, in the timeline before this one is the fact that Jason was already Robin. Like if you if you ignore if, that part, if you part, go back and edit all the names where it says Jason to just Dick, <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you could get away with it for the most part. Yeah. So, uh, but I think what I liked about this though is that it did kind of feel like they want to have more serialization. I, I felt like the stuff that it's setting up with Vicky, um, and the idea of like you know tying into what, what Dick's changed into and i don't know it felt like there was more stuff that we wanted to be ongoing and setting up jason's origin feels that like they're actually trying to make jason more of a character that they're going to do things with in future issues as opposed to just being the robin who batman calls chum and gives lessons to yes he's the robin he gets killed instead <laughs> eventually it's, it's it's not that long really is it in the grand scheme no of death things. De- death in the family is only a couple of trades away uh, for for yeah. our perspective so it's not that long in time, really, at all. Um, yeah. So, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, 
the art's not bad. Uh, there is a couple of weird faces here or there. Or, uh, proportions were a little bit off on the odd occasion. Um, yeah. Still, I love the flowing capes that we got at this time, though. Oh, sure. We I, don't I get enough of that anymore. The biggest thing uh, about critique of art from this era is I feel like colouring, for the most part, you know, year one aside, obviously, almost always looks kind of the same. It's almost like there was like a, a house style of colouring for comics at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, Some of it, I wonder, if is it is it like the the printing capabilities? Like, because we always use just block colours for the skyline. Like mm. at night, it's often purple. But just just all right, just it's just well, a block purple. Obviously, there's exceptions, but it wasn't the norm to not do that. This was definitely still the mainstream normal colouring that you'd get in a comic. Obviously, year one was different, and uh, uh, some of the obviously the stuff like Dark Knight Returns, which had just came out uh, like a little bit earlier, and you know, Watchmen was, you know, about to come out or coming out already. Like, obviously, there was exceptions to it where they were doing different things and trying and moving things forward. But uh, this kind of cartoony colouring is definitely what you think of as, like, mainstream comics at the time. Uh, and obviously for a long time before. Like, you know... I, yeah, and it, it takes a good few years, even from now, to get away from that. Oh, yeah, there's still stuff in the 90s that feels kind of of this style. And I don't dislike this style. I, I think the, 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 the problem was more just that everything was like that for a long time. Uh, if, if a yeah. comic shows up now and it's kind of pulpy and has this colouring style, I'm like, oh, this is kind of a nice throwback, doing kind of an old school. Whereas now it's like, especially, well, maybe not right now, but like two or three years ago, still, especially at DC, it was like, okay, everything looks like a Jim Lee style book. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, so obviously some of these things I'm happy for to go away. This is one where I don't actually mind it still being around... Uh, you know, and the right size portion uh, is just not everything. Everything's obviously. good in moderation. Is, is kind of what you're getting at here. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying. Um, which isn't a compl- and even in this in that context, this isn't a complaint because I'm not reading that many books like this right now. Uh, my, my my point just more being is it's harder to critique the coloring because it's just like it's, the, the normal. It's not bad or yeah. anything like that. It's just this is the standard of the time. Yeah, uh, that's ultimately what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right, that's Batman 408. Uh, what are you giving the issue? Uh, it's a solid seven from me. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, a compartmentalization to it because like, you can sort of split it into the, the prologue stuff with Dick and then you've got the date stuff and the public perception. Then you've got the, the Jason stuff kind of in the last third. So it's very broken down. It is. It feels more... I, I'd say... I could kind of possibly get it into a book of two halves with all the the dick stuff, and then after that. Um, but I mean, that's still pretty fragmented, which is probably what holds it back for me overall. It's not kind of fun seeing what it does with all this stuff. I'll probably go just a nudge higher and say 7.5. Uh, but, you know, I, I love getting to these issues that are kind of important from like, a, okay, this is the issue that actually did something in continuity that we kind of still think about today. It's just fun getting to those moments and kind of seeing... How it worked and how, how they did it and, um... and it's it's different when okay we had year one we know year one but this one kind of catches you off guard almost yeah so no interesting mm-hmm.